Hi everyone, my name is Sam Young. I'm the graduate assistant with the Digital Scholarship Lab here at Marquette. Today we're going to be taking a look at a tool called Palladio. This is a digital, digital visualization tool uh, developed by the good people at the Humanities and Design Lab at Stanford University. Um, so we're going to take you through kind of what Palladio looks like. Um, I've been working with Palladio this semester for a personal project of my own, personal research project. Um, so we'll be using my data sets just as an example to try to show you how Palladio works. So to start, we'll go to hdlab.stanford.edu slash Palladio, and we will hit uh, start. Okay, the first thing that it'll ask you to do is to upload your data. The easiest way to do this is just in a spreadsheet. Um, one thing that's really important, um, this is true with uh, kind of all uh, data visualization stuff, just make sure that your data is consistent. Um, Palladio can be a little bit finicky on particular data points, um, in particular uh, dates and uh, coordinates. They have to be formatted in a particular way for them to register on Palladio. Um, so I'll link to a, uh, to a page below that kind of gives you a rundown of how to format your data, some kind of do's and don'ts. Um, but the big rule of thumb is just be consistent. Be consistent with how you're formatting things. Um, especially if you're working with a lot of information, it can be a real hassle to upload all of that data into Palladio, see that some things aren't registering or aren't being read correctly, and then having to pour back, go back through your data and kind of find where you messed up. So just rule of thumb, if you're going to be using Palladio, really any sort of data visualization tool, make sure you're consistent from the beginning with formatting your data. Um, my project is looking at uh, correspondence, letter writing of Martin Luther during about a nine-month year, uh, nine-month period of his of his life, when he was locked away in a castle and didn't really have any time to do anything else besides write letters and write books. So, um, taking a look at who he's writing letters to, um, what he's concerned with. Um, and how he's dealing with the outside world while he's in exile here. So the way that I'm formatting my da data is that each letter becomes its own entity. Uh, I have bibliographic information, uh, so where if you wanted to find the text of the letter in the original Latin or German or an in English translation, I have that as well. When the letter is written, the language that it's written in, who the author of the letter is, um, who the letter is going to, where the letter is coming from uh, when it was written, where it's going to, destination, location. Uh, and then these last two, looking at the letters, I tried to uh, pick out major themes or subjects that Luther kind of keeps uh, bringing up in his correspondence. Um, and if they're repeated more than once, then I'll mark them as kind of a separate subject. So I'll tag the letters for each of these different things. Um, and then similarly, uh, I've going, I went through the letters and looked at any time Luther mentions somebody by name or refers to somebody. Um, and uh, so I'll mark, I'll tag that letter that it mentions, you know, these particular individuals. Um, one thing that's also really uh, neat or, or kind of cool about Palladio is that it allows you to combine multiple, da multiple data sets together. So this is my main data set of the letters, the correspondence for this nine month period. But I also have two other data sets um, that we'll piece together once we go into Palladio. Um, the first is looking at every person that's part of this correspondence circle of Luther or that is mentioned by Luther. Um, so again, consistency is really important. However you uh, spell it or word something on one table needs to be consistent with how you do it on the other table. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I just have the names of the individual, when they were born, when they uh, died, if there's a specific date, I'll enter that in. Um, birthplace of these people, if there's a particular title or position. Uh, and then when we get into the Palladio program, you'll see that there's a there's an option called a gallery mode that kind of helps you uh, kind of go through and display various points of data. At least for me, what I want to do is use that gallery mode to just show little pictures of each of these people that are part of the correspondence circle. So I've included in my data set uh, links to pictures of these individuals, small descriptions of who they are and why their significance for this time period, and then a link to their Wikipedia page. So when we get to that part of the Palladio program, we'll show why that's significant. Um, the other data set that I have is uh, just a places. So every, um, every location that a letter is coming from or going to, or every location that someone is born in um, for the birthplace of these individuals, um, I have in my places table. Um, and then according to the dictates of what, uh, you know, coordinates need to look like for the Palladio program, um, I have uh, latitude and longitude, longitude um, uh, 
data sets there. So um, what we're going to do now then is we're going to upload all of these into the Palladio program.